This is Brian from actingmelody.com. Well, this week we have a George Harrison uh, cover, which is from the All Things Must Pass album. It's a song called What Is Life. It's just an awesome song because there's this great little lead part uh, that he's using this fuzz effect throughout the whole song. So it's played through the verse and the chorus. So I'm going to show you how to play that lead part. I'm also going to show you how to play the rhythm part, so the chords that are used. So you get to learn the whole thing, both guitar parts. So let's start with the lead. All right, so I lied in the intro. I said we would start with the lead part first, but I think it actually makes more sense structurally to go through the chords so you understand the structure of the song that way, and then we'll layer on the lead at the end. But before I jump into the chords, uh, let me just talk through the tone that I'm using. I know I'll get questions on this. I actually was not using a fuzz uh, pedal, although that would work as well if you have one of those. I was using a, a pedal made by Full Tone, which is called OCD. It's just an overdrive pedal, uh, but I had most of the settings all the way up. I had the volume and the tone at about 75%, and the drive was at about 85%, so almost all the way up with that. And then I'm using the Telecaster, uh, and which George would play on from time to time. I don't know what he used on the recording, but it may have been his Strat. I don't know. But anyway, I had the, the pickup selector switch all the way up here on the bridge pickup, and the, the volume and the the tone were all the way up at 100% on the guitar. So anyway, that's what I used to get the effect. And I thought it was pretty close to what you hear in the recording. Um, and it you know had kind of a nice little break up uh, to get that effect. Now I'm not using those settings now. Right now I have just a tube screamer on. I kind of dialed it back a little for so that I can demo or I can, you know explain what all the, the parts are, all the chords are. Um, okay, so that was the settings. Now let's talk through the chord structure. The first thing that happens in this uh, is the is the lead, lead part, which goes. But underneath that is this really cool kind of funky, uh, sounds like a Stax record, you know, Steve Cropper style rhythm that's going on that goes like this. So those chords, it, we're starting with an E chord. Then we're playing a B chord, and then an A chord. So then it's just A, B, 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 A, A, B, E. So those are the chords. In the strum pattern, I go down, down, up, down. Now I've got all kinds of lessons um, on strumming patterns. I'm not going to get into strumming, but if you're if you want to know more about playing this style of strumming, um, I will put a link uh, on, on the screen, and actually I'll include it on the on the description below so that you can see what that lesson would be on strumming, how you can get this kind of fast, funky strumming style. But anyway, that's that's what's going on in the intro. It's pretty fast. Too. So after that, um, it goes. So that's just a D, and then, so I'm making the D here. I'm going to slide my finger down one fret so that this one is anchored here on the seventh fret, fourth string. This is on the fourth fret, fifth string. And then I'm going to come down and play the uh, B chord twice down here. And then we go right into the verse at that point. And the verse goes like this it goes E. And then it goes to a B. Then it goes to a C sharp. Then to an F sharp minor. And then there's this cool little part that goes between a G chord and a D chord. It goes like this.
So the, the chords there is just a G chord, but then watch the bass notes. I'm walking down. So it's third fret, second fret, open on the sixth string. Then we go to a G, or sorry, to a D chord. And that time I used my pinky and came out and played the fourth fret, fifth string, and the second fret, uh, fifth string. And then we're back to the E. And that just repeats. Now, the second time through, it, I play the same thing again. And then we go, uh, instead of going back to the E at that point, or the E, the low E, we come up and play the high E, which is what I played in the intro. And that, that is what's played underneath the, the, uh, the chorus. And that's really the whole song. And then to get back, you do the those chords, and that's kind of the turnaround, which gets you back into the verse. Okay, so there's the chords. Uh, so now let's talk through the, uh, the lead part, which is kind of cool. It's an interesting way to play a lead through the whole song, just to kind of keep it going. I like it, though. It really works with this song. And so let's get this part of the intro. So we're going to start with the intro. We're going to start with the middle finger on the second fret, third, I'm sorry, second fret, fourth string. I'm gonna, let's talk through the fretted uh, notes first, then I'll get into the picking pattern with the right hand. Then it's the first fret, fourth string. Now we're going to use, I use my ring finger for this. You may want to use your pinky, but we're going to come up here to the fourth fret, fifth string, and then the second fret, fifth string. So those are your first four notes. Now the challenge is going to be getting from here to this. Because you're using your pointer finger, but you're going to have to use your pointer finger again, or your index finger, up here on the first fret, fourth string. Now we're going to come back to the fourth fret, fifth string, back to the second fret, fifth string. Now we're going to have an open A, or an open fifth string. And then we kind of wrap it up there on the second fret, fifth string. So all together, slowly, we have... Now let's look at the picking pattern. It's just alternate picking, down, up, down, up. Watch. Okay, now the second time through, it does that. And that's just open A, second fret, fourth fret, both on the fifth string and then back to the second fret, fifth string. So. Now here's the, the thing. This is a great exercise in timing as well because as soon as you wrap that up, you gotta real quickly use your, you go from your pointer finger to your middle finger uh, being on the second fret, uh, fourth string. So, and you gotta go right into it. There's no waiting. Okay, now the last time through I went, or I say I went, George goes. So for that, he's just coming up to the fifth fret, fifth string. 4th fret, 5th string, open A, and then there's the 2nd fret, 5th string. Okay, so that's the whole intro part. Let me just do one time through real quick, I'm, I'm sorry, real slow. See how you jump back? Now we go right into the verse, and what uh, George is doing there is he's jumping back and forth between the fourth string and the fifth string on the second fret. 
And and I line up a finger. I didn't see any footage of him playing this, but I think this is what he's doing. I don't think he's barring that, although you could theoretically from a fretting perspective. But by playing it with your fingers, you can control how long each string rings out, and that's what you want to do. So you're going to start on. I'm going to call out the string numbers. It's string and this is all in the second fret here. Four, four, five, five, four, four, five, five, four. Just back and forth. Now we go do the same thing, but now we're going to go between the fifth string and the sixth string. Both all, all on the second fret though. See? So. Now watch this. Now to go up to that C sharp chord that we mentioned, it's pretty easy to do because all of this is played on the fifth string. We're coming, you're starting here on the second fret, first fret, back to the second, third, and then up to the fourth. Now watch what happens when you get to the fourth. There's that same little thing jumping back and forth between the two strings uh, in the, within the same fret. Okay, so let's back up. We have... Now watch this. So we have, uh, again, this is all here on the fourth fret now. So we have five, five, six, six, five. Now we have four, four, five, five, four. So you just did the same thing, but we jumped up a set of strings. Now watch this. Now we're gonna do this. Uh, we're gonna, where we're gonna let some strings ring out, and it really works well when you have the chords uh, underneath it. So the the notes there are the fifth fret fourth string, fourth fret fourth string, second fret fourth string, open fourth string. Then we're gonna come down to the fourth fret fifth string and then the second fret fifth string. So, and then back to the, now we just repeat it. And again, now this time, we go right back into what we played for the intro, and that happens in the chorus as well. So. And then you just repeat it. So that's really all there is to what is life, both the chords and the lead part. Um, and uh, the way that I did this, if you want to know how I structured it in the beginning, I'm just using a looper. I have a looper pedal, and so I played one time through just me playing the chords, and then I played the second time through, uh, which I recorded, uh, was me playing the lead over the chords. But that's how I did it. So I was able to do all of that with, you know, with just a, a looper pedal. <laughs> So um, hopefully that's a fun one. If you've got the album, All Things Must Pass, put, put that song on and uh, play along with it. It's just a lot of fun. There's a lot of parts to listen to uh, on the recording. There's also a great live recording of it uh, where Eric Clapton's band was his backing band uh, live in Japan. So that version is really good. I think Andy Fairweather Low plays the lead part on that one, I think. So that's all we have for this week. We'll see you next week.